CSS, FAFSA, COA, EFC. Oh, if all these acronyms make you feel like you need an advanced degree in cryptology to understand them, stick around. Gate System is pleased to welcome Brian Safdari. This is our college financial planning expert. He's going to help break the code to save you money. Welcome, Brian. Oh my god, parents have no idea and students are going to go crazy with these forms. But these financial aid forms are important if you want to get grants and financial aid. So first thing I want to start off is let's talk about the cost of college. The cost of college is not the same as your sticker price. You got to look at past that, how much financial aid you can get with all these terms and stuff that you just mentioned. Huh. Thanks for breaking that down. Let's think about merit aid. There's four banks. Let's talk about banks because that's where the money's at. The four types of banks that the schools have that they don't want to tell you. Number one is need-based grants, which we just talked about the formula. Cost of attendance minus EFC equals need. So need is one way to qualify for financial aid, which they take into account like income, assets, the number of people in the household, et cetera, all that stuff. So that's need-based. The second one is called merit-based financial aid. That one is based off tests, academics, um, that's what you are so good at, and I love the GATE program, how students have insider secrets on what they can do to like maximize that merit aid and those grants that most students don't even know what to do. So that's merit aid, which is a huge part of this process. The third one is institutional merit, but institutional merit could be any reason why the school wants to give you money. For example, that could be you're female Hispanic and going into the engineering department. And if you know what colleges want, you can actually position your child on the applications and that whole process when you're marketing yourself to college to be able to get institutional merit. And that's um, an abundant different ways that you can do that. And then the fourth one, which is my least favorite, and most of the families spend all their time and they pull their hair out, and that's private scholarships. And that comes from the private corporations and foundations, etc. Well, most families think scholarships. Everyone wants, wants the free money, but 91% of families that I've done surveys and I've looked at different places spend their time on those private scholarships that you go online and you fill out these applications and you cross your fingers and you hope you can get your money. But if you spend your time on merit aid and test scores and improving your your grades, and most importantly, the little techniques you have that's pretty cool on how to increase your test scores by 200 points or increase by four points, just that little thing alone can get you seven to $10,000 in more uh, financial aid. So you're no longer paying full price for college and you're getting a wholesale deal out of it. Right, and you always talk about this at our live events together, right? You always say, oh, that's seven or $10,000. Per year, right? Per year. That's crazy. And that's multiply that by four or five years. When I went to school, I was almost on a 10-year program because I could save a lot of money. <laughs> but it's really important when you add all four years. That's a lot of money you can save. You can actually buy a car for the money that you would have given to the school, and the car didn't even cost you anything just by knowing those strategies. FAFSA is free application for federal student aid. Every single school in the country, you have to fill out a FAFSA. There's about 130 questions, and they take into account a lot of different things. And then that form is important, but then a lot of private schools, over, over 300 uh, private colleges, require you to fill out a CSS profile. You know, you had 130 questions and you're overwhelmed. Wait till you do the CSS profile. You have over 350 questions, and they're asking all kinds of stuff, like how much is your income? What is your house worth? What is your net worth? And I'm, I can't wait to, the, to go into these next modules and to really dive deep in this because I'm going to share strategies on how high income families and all income level families can maximize grants and financial aid regardless of their income and assets. So those two forms are really, really important if you want to qualify for grants. EFC is something families don't understand because they fill out a FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. When you submit the FAFSA, the federal government they decide what they think you can afford for college. And they come up with this term called 
we think you can afford this amount, and that's called your expected family contribution. So just because you think you can afford a certain number, that's not the case. They have this insider formula that they don't want to tell you, and it's called the EFC that they determine, and they take that EFC, it stands for expected family contribution, and they take that and they go, we think you can afford $30,000 a year. Now, families who know how this process works, you can bring that EFC down and actually get tons of money and qualify for a lot of financial aid. Free money sounds too good to be true. I mean, how does that work? Oh, it's huge. Six-figure families qualify money. Seven-figure income families get financial aid. Are you kidding? And you have no idea because think about it, college is a business. And everybody looks at it on the education side. I get it. It's important to go. But you got to understand the business side that they're in it to make money. So seven-figure families, why would they want a family like that? That's because they make more money, they might contribute, they may give back, they're gonna call you on Friday nights asking you to donate. Guess who donates? Obviously the people that have been blessed to have more and they're blessed to give it back out. So it's really important to understand that seven-figure families can get financial aid, but the misconception is that financial aid is only for low-income families. You know, over the years and all the live events that you and I have done together, my favorite part of your presentations is where you reveal that the cost of a private university can actually be less than a state school. Need. So, yeah, I spent so many years figuring out, wondering why I couldn't get financial aid, and there was this whole formula, and the school would say, sorry, you don't have a need. I'm like, what do you mean I don't have a need? And I had no idea that there's this formula that it stands for cost of attendance minus EFC equals need. Here's the most important part students and parents need to know. First off, they need to work as a team. And if they're starting with you in 10th and 11th grade, that's when they're thinking about, let's go and shop for colleges. So although the students are thinking about grades, where it's going to be fun, all the other stuff, parents are thinking, every time the student's saying all these college names, parents are thinking price, 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 price. So <laughs> it's really important that both parents and students work together, and the parents may steer the students away from the $60,000, $70,000 private schools because they think it's too expensive. But it's not the sticker price that matters, it's the net cost. And at your private schools, you're eligible for more financial aid. So what happens in the junior year, students go out to college and they only look at the Cal States and the UCs or the just general state schools all across the country because they look at a $20,000 sticker price. But the 60,000, they freak out, but those are the ones that have the money, those are the ones that's gonna get you out in four years or less, and those are the ones that you're gonna get the experience that you may not get at some of the really, really, really big schools. Schools. You know, your kind of support is so important for making college affordable for anyone. Can you explain a little bit to us, why do you do what you do? I will. I only do this because I only surround myself with people who love to help kids. And when I heard about GATE and I heard what you're trying to do and you want to change the world and you have this big heart that you want to get more kids into their dream schools and all that, I said, Anything like that, I'm in, and whatever I have to do, and usually, as you know, most families pay a lot of money for the knowledge and the stuff I learned the hard way, and the way I went through it, and the mistakes I made, and the debt I got in myself into, but when I know this is for good cause, this is to help more kids, I'm willing to share all the secrets and reveal everything I've learned, so that way, any little nugget the GATE students can take and implement, they can have the dream that they always desired and be able to see them succeed. So of course I'll do that.